in today's video, I'm going to show you two ways in which you can create these sort of content navigations that you sometimes see on websites where you have different links that lead to different parts of the same page. So let me show you the two examples that I have here. So first, we're going to be creating this horizontal navigation that we have here that when you scroll to the top of it, it gets stuck to the top of the page so that it doesn't scroll as you look at the rest of the page. And then it carries a few anchor links that lead to the different sections inside the page that you're looking at. The other option or the other layout that we're going to be working with is this other one where we have that navigation stuck to the side or any other part of the viewport really at all times. And then again, we have all of these links that lead to different parts of the content of the page. So I am going to be working with Brian because creating anchor links in Brian is much easier than creating them in 7.1. So if you want to apply the same customization for 7.1, you're gonna find the code for that inside this same tutorial in the code section, but you're gonna have to follow along with a different tutorial to be able to create the anchor links for 7.1 in order to have them inside your navigation. So let's go ahead and get started with that first layout for the content navigation. So here I have a couple of sections in Brine and then what I'm doing to create this navigation is that I'm creating a specific section just for that so that it's so easy for you and for your client to change up the links if necessary at any point. So what I have here is this section that I've just called links to make it easy to target via CSS. And then basically what I have in here is just a text block. And then instead of adding the links side by side, but just adding spacers in there, or like hitting the space in the keyboard to create the space in between them. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to stack them like this. So I just pressed return to be able to create um, or to add a link to each new line inside my text block. And then I'm going to target that via CSS to be able to set them horizontally so that the result is a lot more responsive than if I was just adding spaces with the keyword. Okay, so let's get started with customizing this because right now, if I leave it this way, the navigation is just going to be way too tall. So let's get started by removing all of this extra space that we're seeing here. Now, depending on the settings that you're working with through your site styles, you may or may not need to do this part of the tutorial. So right now I have my sections to be a particular height as a minimum to be able to have them cover as much of the viewport as I want. But right now, this is not going to be helpful for this particular section that I have here. So I'm going to remove that minimum, uh, minimum height that we have going on here. So if we take a look through the inspect element tool and we stand over the actual links section, so the entire section where I have all of my navigation links, we're going to see here on the right side that there is a minimum height of a 90 viewport height that it's set. So this is the value that I used inside my site styles, which like I said right now, is just not going to work for this particular section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be targeting it through the section ID here of links, and then I'm going to remove that minimum height. So let's target here links and then I'm going to set minimum height to zero. All right, so that's already a lot better. However, I still have a lot of space at the top and at the bottom of my navigation block. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. So if I take a look at the following section, so the one that is directly inside that first link section, we can see that there's a lot of padding. Now this padding again was added through my site styles. So I'm not going to edit it through there because I'm going to be affecting all of the different sections in Brine. And I just want to modify this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the value of that top and bottom padding through CSS as well by targeting this container where the padding is already added. So this one is called index page content. And I'm going to make sure that only the one that is located inside this particular section gets modified. So I'm going to be targeting my section again, so links, and then I'm going to be targeting that index page content container like so. And I'm going to set the padding at the top. Let me check here how I said that before to 20 pixels, which looks really good. And then I'm going to set the padding at the bottom to 20 pixels as well. 
All right, awesome. Let me take a look here. I don't know why I did that. All right, here we can see how the section is so much narrower right now, which is awesome. And now that I'm highlighting this, um, I remembered that I want to color this and make it gray. So what I'm going to do is go back into that bigger container, the one that's holding everything. I'm going to set a background color here of a light gray. Now let's go ahead and take care of the actual links so that they sit side by side. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and take a look here through the inspect element tool to see the actual structure that we have right now. So as you can see, here I have my group of links. So each of them is a separate P element that is sitting inside this SQS block content container that in turn is sitting inside the HTML block container. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting these links side by side by using display and line block. So that's going to be the easiest way to make this happen without much of the hassle. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be targeting that HTML block and then the P elements inside it, inside my links section. And then I'm going to be setting these to display and line block. And then once I do that, you can see how all of them are starting to sit side by side. Now, of course, there's not a lot of space in between them. So the way that we're going to fix this is by adding a little bit of margin to the sides. So I'm going to be setting the top and bottom margin as zero. And then to the sides, I'm going to be using 20 pixels like that. All right. So that looks pretty good. And then to be able to center this, because I'm going to assume that you don't want them to be sitting on the left side of your navigation, you want them to be in the middle. So to be able to do that, because these ones are set to inline block, what we're going to do is that we're going to be targeting the block itself. So not the links, but the block where those links are sitting in. And then we're going to set that to text align center. So if we do it this way, text align center, you're going to see how everything just stays in the middle of the full navigation. So awesome. We are getting much closer to the result that we want. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but the difference between the spacing that we have up here and the one that we have down here is slightly different. Now, I covered this in a different tutorial, so I'm going to be linking it just in case you want to check it out. But I'm going to fix this very quickly because it's bothering me a little bit by adding here padding bottom zero and then awesome. That cuts off a little bit of that spacing. And now we have even space at the top and at the bottom of our links. All right. So let's take a look. Awesome. So basically all that is left here is to actually create the functionality that is going to help us have that navigation stick to the top of the viewport as we scroll to the bottom of the page. So the way that we're going to be doing that is with the help of position sticky. Now you may have seen this property or this declaration being used in other tutorials, basically because it's pretty useful. So I'm going to show you how you can use it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to target the thing that I want to stick to the top of my viewport. So in this case, it's going to be the entire links section. So I'm going to be adding position sticky up here. And then just to make sure that this works with some versions of Safari as well, I'm going to be using a WebKit prefix here, position sticky. That's going to help with that compatibility issue that may happen in some Safari um, browser versions. So now that we have this set, all we have to do is set a top offset that's going to allow us to tell our browser when we want this to stick to the window. It's not exactly as when, but as how far away from the top of the viewport we want the navigation to be stuck. So I'm going to be using top zero here because I want my navigation to be completely flush against the top of my browser window. So now if I start scrolling down, once that navigation hits the top of my window, you're going to see how that navigation gets stuck up there. Now, the problem here is that the following sections are now covering that navigation once they start scrolling past that um, link section that we have there. So to be able to fix this, all we have to do is bring that navigation to the foreground so that it sits on top of anything else that is coming scrolling up from the rest of the page. I'm going to be using here 999 and then that is going to fix that issue and it's going to bring our navigation 
to the front of everything else that is sitting on the page and it's going to allow us to see it whether we scroll the page or not. So now if I click on any of these links here, you can see how we scroll down to the specific section um, that we want to see, the one that we're targeting through our anger links. And then if we go all the way back up to the top of the page, you can see how the navigation sticks back into its original place once we go past it again. So awesome, we have all of this set. Now, one thing I believe I added to the demo was a box shadow that I want to um, that I want my navigation to have and just to make it stand out a little bit more from the rest of the page. So I'm going to set this back to zero, three pixels, 20 pixels, and then RGBA point zero eight like that. Okay, awesome. So now if I scroll down, yeah, that's definitely a lot better. Great. All right, so we created this first navigation. Let me show you what this looks like on mobile devices. So here on tablets, it works exactly the same way. So we have our navigation being stuck to the top unless we hit the point where that navigation was originally added to. And so it stops being stuck to the top of the page. And then here on mobile devices is the same thing. And as you can see, it's completely responsive because it keeps acting as any of the different sections in Brine. So, all right, this is looking awesome. Now, one thing I wanted to mention regarding that top zero that we have here, you don't really need to use zero if you don't want to. So let me show you what happens if I use a different number. So if I go all the way back down to make that navigation stick there, if I change this top um, value for, let's say something like 50 pixels, you're going to see how now the navigation is 50 pixels away from the top of the navigation, but it's still stuck there. So this is going to be a helpful value to modify if, for example, you're already working with a fixed header. What you need to do in that case is to determine the height of the header that you have here and then set that as the top value for your sticky navigation. So that way you're going to have enough room to keep seeing that fixed header that you already have and then navigation is going to see it right below it. So there you have it. This is how you can create this horizontal sticky content navigation thing for your client site. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second layout option. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and we're going to take a look at how we can achieve that second look. So the first thing that we're going to do is modify the padding and the minimum height of the section again, so that we don't have this extra space going on here. Now, like I mentioned before, you may not need to do this if you already have fairly thin sections in Brian, so you can skip this part of the tutorial if you need to. So I'm going to go back in and remove the minimum height from my section. And then I'm going to remove the padding or reduce the padding actually. Uh, index page content, padding at the top, let's do 20 pixels, and padding at the bottom, let's do 20 pixels. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to add that background color again just so you can see everything more easily. All right, and then I'm actually going to make that modification for the little spacing, extra spacing that we have down here that I did before. So I'm going to set the HTML block here, padding bottom zero. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and take this out from here. So basically what we're going to be doing is using again the same position property from before, but instead of using position sticky, we're going to be using position fixed. And you're going to see that as soon as I do that, the spacing here gets removed. So right now you can see how I go from the top banner that I have here or the top section to the next one. And I don't have that link section in there anymore. So with position sticky, we do get to have that element in place unless it reaches that threshold of the top offset that we give it. Position fix automatically takes it out from where it is and just stick it somewhere in the viewport. So right now we're not really seeing it because it's being covered by something else. So let's go ahead and bring it forward with set index again. And just like that, you can see how our little element is all the way down here and it's much smaller than it was before. So what we're gonna do is we're first going to place it where we want to have it. Now, 
you can set it anywhere you want along the different edges of the viewport window. I want to set this to, no, let's say this to the top, 50% from the top, and I want to be zero, um, zero percent or zero pixels from the right side because I want to stick it on the right side of my window. Now that's not exactly in the middle vertical wise, so I'm going to be using the transform trick. So I'm going to use here translate y minus 50 pixels, just to notch that 50% from its own height so that it moves a little bit higher up and it stays in the dead center of the entire screen. All right, so now if I scroll this up or down, you're gonna see how that element stays put at all times. And then of course, if I click on the different links, then I still get that anchor link action going on. So this is great. Now, I don't really like the amount of space that I have on the sites here, so I'm going to modify that. Now, that one is still padding for the index section or the index page content container, the one that I have here. You can see that really big padding that I have on the sites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to be using the shorthand property for the padding. And then I'm going to set 20 pixels for top and bottom the way that I had before. And then for the sites, I'm just going to set that to 40 pixels. So I think that looks a lot better. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do here style-wise is that I'm going to bring back that block shadow. So let's go ahead and set this to zero, three pixels, 20 pixels, RGBA. Uh, what was this? 0, 0 0.8, like that. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks really nice. We have like a little shadow going on there. Okay, this is awesome. Great, let's go ahead and take a look at this on mobile. So now that we have that floating around at all times on the side of the window, you're gonna see how this is covering a little bit of the content. Now it's really up to you what you decide to do with this navigation element once you hit mobile devices. I personally just want to get rid of it because I feel like it's not going to be really necessary to have it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be creating a media query and I'm going to be setting this to a max width of 960 pixels. And then I'm going to be targeting the entire link section and setting that to display none. Okay, and just like that, I don't have that navigation content or content navigation showing up anymore in either of my smaller devices, but I do have it here on desktop where it's not as intrusive as it is on smaller screens. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can create two different types of content navigation for your client sites in Squarespace.